Hi everybody, it's Sam from Over Renewables and welcome to part two of this two-part sort of series of videos about this project we've just completed out at Housham. You can see just next to me here, we've got the Sonnen battery. In part one, we covered the Solar Edge 3.68 kilowatt system that we fitted on the pavilion building, the, the new building that this property has. So if you haven't seen that already, go and check that out and then come back to us and have a look at part two. But for this part, we're gonna go through the Sonnen video. So let's jump straight into it. So on this job, we've got the 3.68 kilowatt system that we installed, which is in part one. We've then got a 10 kilowatt three phase solar PV system that was already installed on this job back in the days of the feeding tariff. That feeds into here. And then we've installed this 15 kilowatt hour three phase battery. This battery will actually monitor the generation of both systems. And therefore the main house that's been here for hundreds of years probably, <laughs> that will get the benefit of the three-phase solar PV system and the new system, but also the pavilion building that has just been renovated and, and turned into a bungalow, that will also get the benefit of the three-phase solar and the 3.68 single-phase system that we've installed. So it's, even though it's on separate buildings, everything is fed from this building we're in right now. This install is on a farm, so the electrics are as they are on a farm. Uh, so what we've done is we've installed a separate little consumer unit for our battery and fed everything from that so that we're, we're not getting too involved in the farm electrics as they are currently. But that's the beauty of these systems. We don't have to fully rewire the full site to fit one of these systems. We can separate our little part and install the, the solar or the battery or the EV charger. You know, we do all of that into our own little system with our own little test certificates and make sure we're not, you're not having to fully renovate the property just to fit one of these systems. So let's have a look at the components that make this system up and then we'll go through how it all integrates together. So above this battery here, we've got our Luden distribution board and we've actually converted this into a three phase distribution board. So we've got a four pole main switch. We've then got a B16 triple pole MCB to protect the battery, uh, a B6 triple pole MCB to power the little power meter. That power meter monitors what the solar systems are producing. It also monitors what the grid is doing. So if the if this farm is importing or exporting power. So that, that's really handy because then all that information is put onto the sun and dashboard so that we can see what the home is using, what the uh, import or export is, and what the solar is producing as well. So that's really cool. All that is then fed down through a, a Cat5 or Cat6 data cable into the top of the battery. We've then got a AC isolator just here. So that allows us local isolation for the battery so that if we need to work on this system, we can turn it off from the AC side. You can imagine if this was somewhere else, you know, away from the main electrics, then we'd have to have maybe two of these isolators so we've got local isolation in both places. But this is all in one place and therefore is, is easy enough for us to isolate at the main source. That comes down in a, an AC power cable and delivers the three phase route for this battery to either charge up with or discharge back into the house, depending on what the solar's doing and what the home's consumption is. We then, because this is a slightly older version of the Sonnen, because Sonnen now, they don't make a purely three-phase battery, they just produce single-phase batteries. So if you want a three-phase system with Sonnen, you have to have three single-phase batteries, one per phase. This Eco 8 model is a three-phase all-in-one battery, which I actually quite like, because it keeps things nice and compact. With that though, the regulations have kind of changed since this was out and was functioning and been sold. So we've, we have to fit this voltage monitoring device here. All this does is got some relays in and disconnects the supply to this battery if the voltage from the grid gets outside of range. So that's what that does, but it, that's just in line with the with the battery's board so it can disconnect everything if there's a problem. So it's just a little safety feature. We've also got a internet connection to this battery so that all of the monitoring can be done online. You'll notice here, we've got this blue ring on the Sonnen. So that means basically everything's okay. Um, it'll pulse slowly 
to show that it's either charging or discharging. Basically, if we see the blue, it's all good. We, we know the system is, is working. If we see a green light there, we know there's been a power cut. So there are um, devices called a Sun and Protect that allows you to keep certain circuits live during the event of a power cut. This is the Eco 8 model. We're on to the Eco 10 model now, or the Sun and Battery 10, which has the Protect 4000. So you can have 4000 watts of, of protection in the event of a power cut. And so we take out circuits from your consumer unit and wire them through the Protect to keep the energy, keep the power on in the event of a power cut. But that's not relevant to this video. I got a bit sidetracked there. <laughs> if we see a red light, that means that there's an internal battery problem. So even though there's not a screen on this battery, we can actually tell what's happening through this light. So all the monitoring, the in-depth monitoring is done through the dashboard or the app, but uh, the actual light here gives us an indication as to what's happening. If we lose internet, we would see an amber light, like an amber yellow light. And again, that indicates fairly clearly that we've lost an internet connection, but everything's okay with this battery. It'll be the charging or discharging at the minute, probably discharging, seeing as the weather isn't that great. But, uh, but yeah, it's here, it's tucked out the way and it's looking after itself. So let's have a little look at the existing 10 kilowatt solar PV system. So this was the one that was installed back in the days of the feeding tariff and has been on this farm for quite a few years. So all of this is up on this top trunking. So we've got our armored cable here, which comes from the inverter in the, in the barn. We've got a three phase generation meter, an AC isolator, and then that's the consumer unit that the installers will have installed to supply the, the solar PV system. We've put some clamps on that to monitor the solar there. So that'll give the, the battery all the information it needs for the solar PV um, for the system. These are the Farmy Electrics over here. So we've got the CT clamps on here, which are the main tails coming from this set of meters. So that is monitoring any energy that has been bought in by one phase, been exported by the other, and the battery can then work that out to balance the phases. So if, if L2 is uh, discharging, is buying power in, then this can discharge onto L2, but it might be charging on L1. So it can kind of work out what's happening to try and bounce those phases. So they're really important clamps of those. Um, but that's kind of it. There's just two sets of CT clamps, which tell the battery everything it needs to know to charge up, to discharge, to not do anything, um, and to report all of that information onto the sun and dashboard. So here we have the 10 kilowatt three phase solar PV system that has already been installed on this property many years ago. We've got 54 panels behind me and that all feeds back to a central three phase inverter in this barn. That goes down the armored cable and into where that trunking is and all the electrics are. And that feeds all of this three phase energy back into that property there, which the battery can see and can decide whether or not to use it to charge up or to just leave it to let it go into the house or to top up with battery power to supply the load that's required for the house and for the new pavilion. So this needs a clean and we are scheduled in to come back and clean this system because it's not been touched since it's been installed and we can see a lot of lichen growth and, and things like that. So if you've got panels, it's always worth contacting your local window cleaner or someone like that that's got the long pole, telescopic brushes, to just give your panels a wipe off. If they get to sort of this stage where they're actually quite dirty and got quite a lot of lichen and things like that on them, then a window cleaner will maybe struggle to get all of that off and it needs a bit more of a closer inspection. But it's like anything, if you do it every year, then it doesn't get chance to build up. So regular maintenance just makes your system generate more and makes it probably cheaper in the long run because you haven't got to get close up access to these panels to, to clean them. But we're gonna do a bit of a service on this anyway. But yeah, this is the system. This is working really well still and this customer gets a feeding tariff for this. So the systems that we've installed, the battery and the, the additional solar, they don't affect this customer's feeding tariff. So they get exactly the same as what they originally got for this system when it was first installed. The only benefit now is they get more cell consumption out of that system. So if you're sat there with a solar PV system and you're getting, I don't know, 1,500 pounds a year back from your feeding tariff, then fitting any of this equipment won't jeopardize that. All we're wanting to do is to give you more of an opportunity to use that energy that you produce. So instead of 50% of that going back to the grid, we want you to use that 50% at the time where energy is rocketing, why not try and use everything that you produce by putting a battery storage system in or another device that uses electricity from solar. But get sidetracked again. So this is the system, needs a good clean, but it's generating well and has been ever since it's been installed. So inside this barn, 
is where the three-phase inverter is. So those panels that we just showed you, they all feed down into this three-phase inverter. That three-phase inverter is just up high level up there. You might be able to see it. That feeds into a set of four DC isolators, which splits that array that we've seen on the roof into four different sections. Then we've got one main AC isolator there. With these cows in here, not the cleanest, but we did, we did clean this actually uh, not so long ago. So it's looking a lot better than it did. But yeah, all that power comes from that inverter and is fed in back into that central room where the battery is. So we've seen how all that lovely solar power comes back into this central building. Um, it then goes into this battery, depending on if there's enough solar power to uh, have a surplus. If we've got a lot of generation from the 10 kilowatt and a lot of generation from the 3.6, there'll be more energy coming into this little area here than what the home or the homes now need. So this battery then starts to charge up. It puts that into its 15 kilowatt hours of storage. So that is all built into this one cabinet. So within this cabinet, we've got an inverter, three phase inverter at the top. We've then got two battery modules in each section. So they're two and a half kilowatt hours each, which is 15 kilowatts, if I've done my maths right. Um, that stores the power and then it might not be used till uh, later on in the evening or tomorrow morning, it just depends on how the home uses its power. So that's the end of part two of this series of videos about this latest project out here in Housham. Just to recap, we finished this 15 kilowatt hour three phase battery. We had the 3.68 kilowatt solar PV system, all solar edge up on the pavilion. And then we've also integrated everything to work with the 10 kilowatt three phase solar PV system that was here historically. I really do like the Sonnen equipment. I think it looks the part and it's, it's just such a robust system. This is now all set up ready to allow this property to combat the rising price of energy that we've all faced. I know for me personally, we've had our electricity company go bust and our prices has nearly doubled. So getting this sort of equipment doesn't remove the need to buy power in, it just removes the amount of power that you've got to buy in. And with a battery storage system, you can then also charge things like this up on a night so that if you've got a dual split rate tariff where you're maybe paying 5p overnight or 7p overnight, instead of that just going to waste and you can only maybe put your electric car on and maybe schedule your washing machine now and again to turn on during that time, you can actually just schedule this to charge up so that even when you have to use energy during the day, the likelihood is that if your solar isn't producing that much because it's winter time or it's just a really dull day, you've got 15 kilowatt hours of, of five or seven pence electricity ready to go so that even though you're not getting any solar power, you are using cheaper electricity. But I hope you like this video and I'd really appreciate a like, a comment, a subscribe, hit the notification bell and all of that good, good stuff and we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks very much.